guys, welcome back to Jadi Sorcol, tempat di mana kamu bisa cerita semua masalah kamu, mulai dari kerjaan, kuliah, sekolah, pokoknya apa aja kamu bisa ceritain di sini. Dan hari ini aku pastinya tidak mungkin sendiri ya. Hari ini kita kedatangan a very very special and a very very exciting guest yang pastinya teman-teman semua tuh ngefans dan adore her so much. Ya sabar kan siapa? Please welcome Kak Crystal. Fans, please. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited. I'm I'm very nervous when I'm I'm always nervous in front of cameras. I'm actually very bad at this. Oh, okay. How frequently I might do this. Aku juga kok, Kak. <laughs> By the way, Kak, uh, you've been like into Jakarta since when? Last night. I Last just flew in. This is my first time back in Jakarta oh. since 2020. Oh. God, it's been so long. How was your flight? It was good. Uh, very packed. A lot of people going mudik. It was great. And then uh, landed very late. Didn't get to eat anything interesting oh, no. yet. But I'm very excited. But what was your favorite food that in Indonesia, Indonesia food that mm. you really crave the most as soon as you land here? Fuck me, I am. That's Bak all I really am. wanted to eat once I landed. Yeah. yeah. So Sam Strawberry Corner. <laughs> I think it's everywhere in Jakarta, yeah. It's so good. Let's go there after this. Yes. <laughs> okay, a little information from our sources. Kak Crystal ni uh, sudah bekerja di udah berapa, udah berapa tahun ya kak? Dia udah more than like my work career. I started my first full time job out of college in 2013. Oh, But I was working since I was 17. And you've been abroad to so many countries and cities, and I got a little curious. Like, and if you could spend your whole life in just one city or maybe one country, what would you choose and why? Ooh, that's a hard one. So I always ask this question: Where would you live versus where would you vacation? And it's always a different answer for everyone. But I have to live somewhere. I might pick. Bali or Singapore because Bali. I can fly anywhere from either of these places. Oh yeah, it's close to anywhere. And the food. The food. And the food. That's the most yes. important thing. Yes. Bali has so much good food. Like everything is just compiled there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyways, Kat, there's a catch. <laughs> there's a catch for you, of course. There is a catch. Nothing in life is free. <laughs> it's not only them that gets to spoil things, that gets to spill things and tea, I get you to spill tea too. Let's do it! <laughs> so, we have a challenge called Card Challenge, where you will pick one card from our deck, and then you will read it, and then you will show it to our audience, and do the challenge. All right, bring it on, let's see. And if you pass, we will give you a reward. Mm. Mm. What kind of reward? Yeah, that's what we we're, we're going to talk about it. And before that, I want to ask you: Is there any drinks that you really crave right now? Marketing campaign: Please drink Jago coffee. It is an amazing startup. Uh, disclaimer: I am definitely an advisor there, but uh, it's a, like a coffee cart mm -hmm. that goes around Jakarta and other areas in the city. And you can get amazing coffee from it. So let's do that. Jago coffee. Jago coffee. There's no specific um, coffee. In I like coffee susu, like or oh. coffee susu, like everyone else in this city. Um, sugar has become a mainstay in Indonesia, and I'm here for it. Yeah. After that, and it's really good. So yeah, you should lock that in. Lock that in, team. Team. Let's do it. Let's okay, do it. let's do it. No need to linger. Aku juga udah nggak sabar banget untuk ngeliat Kak Crystal ngelakuin challenge-challenge-nya so yeah, let's go to the card challenge! Ta-da! We have this card challenge here. here. <laughs> we have this card challenge. Yeah, we have this card challenge for you to pick one of it. Can you give me a this? hint? Oh, no. yeah. I feel like everyone always panic. picks the middle one, so... The middle one? Pick the first one. The first one! <laughs> okay. Still three ha yang kamu bawa di tas kamu. Ooh! Okay. Let's do it. Excited. Okay. Um, teams, can you please... Alright, three things. 
three things. Let's see. Okay, so my three things will be, no surprise, lipstick. A lipstick. A Tude House. This is just becoming a commercial for all of the brands that I use and I love. Please sponsor us. Please sponsor us. <laughs> I'm all about the lipstick. Um, item number two, maybe my Kindle. So in 2020, um, before COVID hit, I was reading every single day for two straight years. Oh every week, God. sorry, two years. I read 21 books in Ooh. 2019 before COVID hit. And then ever since then, my entire life routine has been thrown off. <laughs> What's your favorite book there in Kindle? My favorite book right now is The Courage to be Disliked. Courage um, to be Disliked. Because it teaches me a lot about how to think about my interpersonal relationships mm -hmm. and how I interact with people and how I think about personal blame and personalization versus what I could actually do to understand that person or situation better. Yeah. So it's an empathetic book. Last yeah. thing, water. Aqua water. can sponsor us. Um, it's important to stay hydrated. I think it's the key to healthy lives. Everyone watching this right now, go grab a drink of water. Yeah. You're probably dehydrated. Two liters every day. Every day. Noted. <laughs> Yeah, but I really love that you gave some insights on books and then more. But yeah, that's a really, really spill the tea from you. Yeah, <laughs> spilling the, the hydrating tea. Okay, uh, Ka, now it's time for us to spill our audience's tea. It's not this year. Let's do it. Let's, do it. Let's go to the next spicy session. And now it's time for us to spill your tea and we're going to the first church talk. Okay, Kak, be ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Um, Ka, how do you switch career to tech? I have experiences in e-commerce but not in tech. I got laid off actually. I already joined the data analyst bootcamp, applied for work, but there are no certain callbacks from them. I really need some advice. That's hard. Um, I think for me, I didn't know that I wanted to do data until I tried solving the problems in my company with data. So I would, as practical advice, go to BigQuery, Google BigQuery. There are open data sets and I would try to find problems or interesting insights in that data set. Building a portfolio is something that we often talk about in design or uh, even in uh, an engineer's portfolio. And likewise, I think Data people should also have a portfolio of things that they've analyzed and insights they've found. So I would look for open data sets, big open data sets, and apply my curiosity, right? It's important to know that no data is really important. It's just numbers until you find something interesting worth talking about. So there's a taxi open database in BigQuery where you could ask yourself, are there certain parts of the city where the trips are longer than anywhere else in the city? Uh, why might that be? Where are people going? Can I find some explanation in this one interesting difference in all of this pile of data, like find that gold? Yeah. And then build a portfolio, similar to how designers and engineers would have a portfolio of, here's all of the work that I'm capable of doing. We also need to show that, hey, I'm capable of this kind of thing. Here's what I could do by myself. Imagine if you employed me and you gave me a mentor, like I'm gonna be amazing. Mm. So I think that being able to show like, what can I do by myself independently? And can I be curious and show people what I'm capable of? Mm -hmm. Those portfolios are the first step to being different from everyone else. Mm. That's new insights. All I think about of portfolio is sometimes like design people on yeah. the portfolios, but exactly. actually data analyst person needs a portfolio. Sure. Get that portfolio. Yeah, get that portfolio. <laughs> Thank you so much for the answer, Kat. Now we move to the second church job. I am a CS fresh graduate and unemployed. Recently, I'm over with software engineering job, but I don't really like that loving app and private job with data fields like data analyst. Do you think I need to be realistic to try another job or be idealistic and keep chasing my data job journey? What do you think? Hmm. 
I can't say exactly what this person should do. You should never follow the life advice of a random person who doesn't know the full context on the internet. But I think there's two ways that this goes. One is, are you sure you want to be a data analyst? Why is that? Do you have really good reasons? Um, did you hate doing computer science in college? And is that experience actually going to be 100% the same in your workplace? Who knows? Um, if you have a job, hey, it's hard to find a job right now. Maybe you should take it and try it and see. But if you know deep in your heart that computer science is not for you, that you actually love data, you've been passionate about it, I think this is actually a very important thing to recognize because I only recognized that when I was in investment banking, that I hate investment banking. I was terrible at it. I thought I would be, you know, taking the Asian stereotype of getting a job in IB and then yeah. I'll make my parents proud. <laughs> but I forced myself to do that and I just wasn't good at that job as a result. So I ended up choosing to do something very different like data and I became much more passionate. I was better at my job. I was excited about it. And as a result, I, was, I had a lot more impact at the company that I worked at. So it depends, I think, like, do you really know that this is what's for you? Or is it really something that you're forcing yourself to do? Yeah, agree. So basically what Catherine will say, find yourself and find your reasoning, like a strong reasoning. Find your internal desire and recognize if it's really what you want or is it something you've been telling yourself you want. Retweet. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ka, for the insights. Now, let's move on to the third trip job. Hi, Ka. I am a third year computer science student. Honestly, I can't say that I'm enjoying my time learning computer science. However, recently I feel so small comparing to my other peers that are already going for internship or even started their tech related job early on. It makes a little change in terms of my productivity on coding and learning CS. Do you have any advice to deal with um, programmers burnout? Um, what do you think about that? Oh, I'm sure That's you hard. have a lot of burnout. Burnout, I think, comes from two places. One, it's you are trying really hard at something, but it's not resulting in the impact or progress that you wanted to see. Um, or two, you are in a place where you're trying to fight against like impossible forces and you're just getting blocked left and right. So is it that you can't get a job because not all of us are fortunate enough to be able to take on a free unpaid internship or get those roles? Um, even when I started out in data at Gojek, I felt like I was progressing so slowly. I, I felt like I had zero progress for like three or four months. It's like writing SQL the same way. I was copy pasting things all the time. It was always uh, falling under the same errors. I kept Googling the same thing over and over again. And I realized that is actually the job of computer science. It's oftentimes just Googling stuff. Um, but then some day, like things just clicked and it suddenly all kind of came together. But what I did realize is that I did progress day after day. I became better and that progress had to be measured relative to myself. Am I better than I was yesterday? Because everyone's journey is going to be different, yeah. right? You might be slower right now, but wait till that acceleration hits. Do I have a path to get there? Am I going to be doing my best work at some point in time? I think I have to believe that I will. And I can't compare myself to other people who might have different resources or better access to things than I have. It's not fair to them, it's not fair to me especially. Yeah. So compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not, not anyone else. Not anyone else, yeah. It's part of your process, it's okay to feel that way. I think it's the reason that you became more stronger and become more knowing on what you have capable of. Yeah, be yourself. That's <laughs> again. Okay. Everyone yourself. else is taken, everyone else is taken, be yourself. Yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely agree with you. Um, and thank you for that. Wedangan. Uh, what is wedangan in Indonesia? Um, like Indonesian wedangan saran. Yeah, saran. That's the word that I'm talking. <laughs> okay, let's move on, Kak, to the fourth turtle. Hi, Kak. So basically, I have been using Tableau for three years and I really want to add more skills so that I can become a data analyst. What skills should I learn next according to you? 
Is it SQL? And is there any resources that I can use? The answer is yes. Anyone who needs to be a data analyst, the absolute answer to do I need to learn SQL is always yes. Uh, pro tip, if you don't know SQL, you are not a data analyst. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they have Tableau means that at least you have a database in your company where you can do analysis and you have access to a relational table set. So yes, you will have to learn SQL. You'll have to pick it up through maybe what I did was go to w3schools.org to just pick up the basics. But what I when I really learned SQL, it was going through my company's data. So first I would copy paste other people's SQL queries and edit it. Um, and I would Google, you know, what functions exist because even computer scientists do this and engineers do this. You're able to go through uh, Stack Overflow, copy paste some code, change it a little bit, and then it's yours. So I would do the same thing here. I would learn by seeing how I could adjust the data um, or the tables that it was using or the columns. And now sometimes I even dream in SQL and tables. So it does take practice and it takes time, but it is an important skill to learn. The next thing to pick up is probably learning how to write in Python or R mm. or even do a little bit of DevOps. There is nothing better than being able to SSH into a server and then execute a binary file or a code uh, so that it can generate some interesting data product. And now you are legitimately like a data engineer. Mm -hmm. And that's really cool. Yeah. The key is practice, practice, practice. Pick up those skills. Yes, pick up those skills. Ah, but I'm sure you have a lot of, um, I don't know, do you have a moment like, I hate this SQL? Like, a lot of people hate it, actually, and I'm one of it. It's, you can't love every part of the job. Mm -hmm. um, it's always going to be a challenge. So for me, it's always worth it, though, right? The epiphany that you have in solving some problem or getting uh, to the answer. And it has to be driven by your curiosity for the right problems. Mm -hmm. So when I'm stuck and I'm writing SQL, I'm like, the code works, but it's not getting me the data that I need. And I'll keep kind of fighting at it. Mm. I'll go to sleep. I'll literally dream of like, okay, wait, this is how I'm going to do this new subquery. And I'll figure out how to get the data that I wanted. And when I finally get it done, that's when I feel like the challenges and all that struggle is really worth it. You're not going to be motivated all the time. I think that that's a really bad way to live life is to like <laughs> lean on motivation and being motivated because it just doesn't work. Like we get tired and we have bad days. Yeah. So for me, it's about determination, being disciplined and being curious. Do I want to solve the right problem that will be impactful to my career or the company? Then I'll keep struggling and I'll keep at it because the end result when I finally get to that answer is almost always worth it. Yeah. Practice, discipline, curiosity. Yes. <laughs> Last questions. It's from me actually, but I'm sure a lot of people have a curiosity about this. Do you have any attitude that you've taken on uh, from your words? And do you have any tips on that? So the attitude I've taken throughout my career has been one where I had to kind of figure things out mm -hmm. um, as I went out of college. Um, so coming out of college is a scary time because in college everyone tells you what you need to do. It's a very structured time in your life where you have a set list of classes that you need to yeah. take and you kind of check these off the list. Mm -hmm. But then when you graduate, now it's like, well, what, what can I, I can do anything. And that's actually very scary. It's like a first time for many people, including myself, mm -hmm. um, which meant that I had to work on finding what I was passionate about. And again, I had to reflect on what society told me I should be doing versus what I actually wanted to do. And finding the right place and boss and career that helps you live the best version of you is so important. So if you feel like you could be better and you need to be in a different place, that change requires action, which mm -hmm. a lot of us don't have the energy to take sometimes. So even for today, um, where life is actually really hard right now, uh, a lot of people have been laid off, a lot of companies don't seem like they're growing, no one knows what they're doing, then I have to step back and reflect and ask myself, can I take some time to myself and try to understand what I want out of life and what I'm good at and what I want to be better at? Mm -hmm. And once I do that, then hopefully the path is maybe not perfectly clear, but it's a little bit clearer 
um, and I can make more intentional decisions. So I think I've evolved over being like, the world is my oyster, like let me do a little bit of everything, yeah. to okay, now that I've done some of these things, I've searched these opportunities, which one of them did I really like and why? Which ones helped me grow? And that's kind of led me through my path. I don't have anything where I'm like, I want this title or I want this salary, like that, that kind of stuff doesn't really motivate me. But it's been really about how do I become the best version of myself and what are the environments and roles and people that I need to work with to be that person. Oh my god, that is so insightful for me and I'm sure a lot of people take an insights uh, to their life and really hope that helps you too for your problems that you've been going through and semangat ya. Semangat. <laughs> semangat. Life is hard. Let's do this. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ka. Thank you. Okay, now it's time to announce whether you passed the challenge or not. You passed! <laughs> yes. yeah. I'm really done failing tests in school all year, so... <laughs> okay, please enjoy your reward. Your Jago coffee, yum yum yum. Yum yum yum. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Mint coffee. Everyone go download Jago app now. Please sponsor us. Please sponsor us. <laughs> okay, before you munch on that, you drink that, you have one minute to promote anything that you want, and I will give you the stage. So, All right. Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, you can go now. All right. Please sign up for our Winter Club at Generation Girls Instagram. You'll be able to sign up soon. Keep an eye out, follow us, and also look out for Hour of Code. Yay, benar banget kata kata Crystal. Kita akan ada Winter Club and also Hour of Code. Jadi jangan lupa stay tune di Instagram kita at generationgirl.id. Thank you so so much, Kak Crystal, for sharing very very insightful tips and saying hi to all of us. And I'm so happy that I get to meet you in real life. I know, it's so long. It's yeah, so long. yeah, it's too long. Dan buat teman-teman yang lagi nonton sekarang bisa banget curcol di link di bawah ini bit.ly bit.ly slash janji curcol and we'll make sure to feature it to our next episodes dan jangan lupa untuk like, share, and subscribe YouTube Generation Girl dan juga jangan lupa follow IG kita at generationgirl.id See you in our next episode! Bye-bye! Bye! -bye. Bye. Thank you.